Hello everyone and welcome to the Frustum Culling tutorial. This asset helps you improve the performance of your game by completely disabling game objects that are out of view, with an optional feature of using distance culling, so that's culling objects that are out of distance. Before we get further in this video, I would like to emphasize that Unity already does Frustum Culling to static-only objects under the occlusion culling system. But Unity's solution simply disables the mesh renderer of the game object while leaving everything else enabled, while my, so my solution completely disables the entire game object that includes all of its components. That of course is suitable, but in some situations you may find it to be an overkill. That said, let's get right to it. I'll start off by showing off my scene. So this is my scene, as you can see a bunch of game objects. But there is so much I can do to improve performance using Frustum Culling. So for example, this oil tank up there, the one that's glowing, that's because it's an interactable, a player can interact with it. With it. But I have no reason to have it uh, stay enabled when the player isn't looking. So let's fix this. I'll get out of my scene, exit the scene. Now, in order to use Frustum Culling, we have two parts. The first part is uh, setting up the manager, the Frustum Culling Manager. And then this is the easiest part. You simply right-click, create an empty game object, Frustum Culling. And that's it. It is by default set to Auto Catch Camera. So if you have your uh, camera ready on start, then leave it at this. But if your camera gets spawned in runtime, then simply set auto catch camera to off and then you'll notice a main cam property has appeared then through code when your camera is ready you can simply set it in this property right here but I'll leave it at auto catch camera the second thing is telling the game object itself to use for some calling now uh, we have to set this script where the mesh renderer is at component first calling object and then click on build edges. The edges are built using uh, the mesh data of the game object. Sometimes it's off, you can change the mesh, the edge radius set. So these are the edges built by reading the mesh data. You can change the size of the edges to make it uh, uh, appear, right? And sometimes it may get a little off. So you can simply uh, click on any of the edges because they become childs of the main object and then you can set it as you wish. Right, so let's test. I'm going to make a split screen right here. Let's press play. Ah. You see? I'm not looking, so the uh, oil tank got disabled. Now, before even looking at its direction, it gets enabled, re-enabled. Again, it gets enabled. Doesn't matter how fast you are, it always looks smooth, as you can see. And obviously works from all other directions as well, so we can, like for instance, come here and then look back, it'll still work. So yeah, something, that, something else we could do to improve the scene is, for example, these lights. I have no reason for them to be enabled when the player isn't looking, because they're not exactly uh, do, giving out this much light. So I'm going to choose all of these uh, sphere spheres of light, and then add component for some calling object, and then build edges. Let's take any of the lights, for example. Here's this one, as you can see, the edges have been built. And again, the edges become children of the, uh, of the game object. And again, remember that the object has to be set where the mesh renderer is. Now, let's give it a shot. Here's a view of the camera's frustum. Let me just minimize this one. As you can see, when we get closer to the lights, they get enabled. When we get further away from them, when they're out of view, they get disabled. As you can see. And it's always smooth looking. And then again, it works from everywhere, really. So, yeah. As you can see. 
that's it. Thank you for watching, guys.